Hey guys, this is Chad with Thriving Canine, and I want to give you guys a tip about um, behavior modification, but not about any specific behavior. I might talk about a couple ones, but this is a general concept, and uh, it might seem oversimplified at first, but really, I mean, people struggle with it. So the basic concept is consequences, the concept of consequences or behavior and the consequence of that behavior. So, and trying to look at things from the dog's perspective. So, <clears throat> now you'll you'll also, if you get into studying dog behavior at all, uh, you're gonna come across the term operant conditioning. And you're gonna hear about positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement and positive punishment and negative punishment. And that starts to get very complicated. I mean, at least sounds complicated and the language is complicated and confusing. And I'm going to save that for another day. I do. I, I'd like to talk about that, but that's going to be another day and it's more complicated. So this is going to be a primer to that. This is just about, but the whole thing is consequences. So positive reinforcement is giving the dog a cookie, right? Negative uh, punishment is not giving the dog a cookie, blah, blah. See how it's getting confusing already? Okay. So, um, Let's just think of it this, let's simplify this. Let's just put two columns, okay? So we're gonna say this one column is good and one column is bad. So, and you can fill in other words for that. I mean, it might just be uh, getting into semantics of it all, but like, so the good column, good is what? Wanted, uh, desirable, pleasurable, enjoyable. Um, something that you're seeking or something the dog is seeking or achievement, right? So they're trying to get something or they're getting something, uh, that sort of thing, okay? Bad column, what's bad? Unwanted, negative, um, right? Good over here, back to good. Sometimes you'll hear the word positive. Positive can mean add, addition or subtraction, but for our purposes here, the positive outcome for the dog means something good. Negative outcome for the dog, something bad. Or, or positive behavior that we like from the dog, negative behavior, something we don't like from the dog. So it's a matter of whose perspective are we looking at? Are we looking from the dog's perspective or our perspective? And we need to kind of look at both, right? So good, pleasurable, wanted, bad, unpleasurable, negative, unwanted, undesirable, right? So if you're talking consequences, it would be something the dog would want to avoid, okay? So your basic concepts of learning, if we simplify them is, right, the dog is trying to achieve something, the dog is trying to avoid something, right? So the dog is, that's pretty simple, I think, okay? So let's think about that. So now let's just take a behavior, let's say the behavior is coming when called. Okay, coming when called, which column do we put that in? Well, from the human perspective, coming when called, we put it in the good column. It's something, we, it's good, it's wanted, it's desirable, right? It's something we want from the dog, it's something we like when the dog does it. Okay, so, but what are the consequences of when the dog comes? This is when it gets tricky. Because a lot of people are not realizing it, of course, but they're making coming when called fall into the bad column for the dog, right? Because, and a lot of times, let's say it starts with a puppy. You get your little puppy and you put him out in the backyard and you get your coffee or you get your lunch or whatever and you're kind of in a hurry and you got to get the kids ready or whatever's going on. And then now we got to bring the puppy back inside and we got to put him in some kind of confinement probably. He's probably going to have to go in a crate or a playpen or he gets locked in a laundry room or locked in the garage or whatever. People have different scenarios, but probably you're not leaving a puppy loose in the house. That would be another topic. Okay, so call the puppy in. The puppy's around, running around the yard having a good time. You call him in and when and you come him in and you're in a hurry. So he goes almost directly right into the crate. Boom. Bad column for the dog. Okay, so now you've this, essentially you've punished the dog for coming when called. And now you're going to make him be suspicious about being called. Hmm, I don't know. What do they want from me? 
they going to lock me up? I don't know. So sometimes he might start to lose a little motivation. So just a little, come here, puppy, puppy. Doesn't work anymore. So what do you do? You break out the bag of treats. Maybe you even have to shake the treats. Cookie, cookie. Want a cookie? Looky, looky. Want a cookie? Right? And then what happens? That might work for a time or two. He goes, oh, cookie. He comes. And you take the cookie. Maybe you even go take the cookie over to the crate. And you throw it in the throw the cookie in the crate and he chases the cookie into the crate and then whammo, slam the door. In jail you go. So that, again, negative consequence for the dog. So it's falling in the bad column. So, basic rule of thumb, do not punish behavior that you like. Now, rule number one, don't punish desirable, wanted, good behavior from the dog, which in that scenario, you see somebody's accidentally doing it, just out of necessity. Okay, so, Rule number two, right, would be don't reward unwanted behavior. So let's, let's look at that. Let's say, what's the, here's another scenario where people go wrong. Then we'll talk about doing things right. Okay, so let's take jumping on people. That's a common one. That people would say, they put that in the bad column. In the bad column. Because it's unwanted. It's undesirable. We don't like it. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it gets our clothes dirty. So we just don't like the dog jumping. The dog is just happy to see you. He doesn't mean anything bad by it, but we put it in the bad column generally, most people do. But from the dog's perspective, what usually happens when they jump up? They're trying to get attention and they're getting attention. Sometimes it's because just blatant. Like some people, they actually pet the dog when the dog jumps up, sometimes. So it's kind of like a what mood am I in kind of thing. The dog, how's the dog supposed to figure, navigate that, right? That's difficult. But so they, some people, and sometimes friends and family members and other people will do it. The dog comes up and they pet him. That's okay, I don't mind. A lot of dog people don't mind, you know, and especially if they have their grubby clothes on. They have their nice clothes on, all of a sudden they mind. They have a cup of coffee in their hand and the dog spills coffee, all of a sudden they mind. So it's inconsistent, hard for the dog to navigate. But that would be an example. The dog is being rewarded for the unwanted behavior. But sometimes it's not as blatant as that. It's uh, the people are trying to say no. So they're essentially they're trying to punish the dog for jumping. No, no, stop it. Eh, eh, eh. No, 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 no. Maybe they go sit, 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 sit. Maybe the dog sits and then now they reward the dog for sitting. But when they do that, they're also probably rewarding the jumping probably created a sequence that also rewards the jumping. So ultimately the bad behavior leads to a reward. That sequence can be figured out by the dog. Even dogs can do that kind of math. So um, we wanna make sure that that's not happening, right? We don't wanna reward the unwanted behavior. Is with me so far? So those things are connected. We don't want to punish, right? In one scenario, the coming when called is being punished. So we're punishing a wanted behavior. The jumping when jumping up, yeah, yeah, it feels like playing and horsing around and the dog's getting attention. Now you're rewarding the dog for the unwanted behavior, okay? So what do we do? The do if the, we want the dog to come when called, eat, let's go back to our scenario. Puppy in the yard has to be called. And of course he has to be put in his crate and everything. You need to set yourself up to have a little bit more time so you're not in so much of a rush. So you can call the dog to you. You could give him a treat. Let him go back into the yard if he wants to, right? Or you wait until there's a scenario where the dog wants to come inside and you call him and let him and bring him inside and play with him inside or let him hang out inside, right? Or maybe you got to get him in the crate like we talked about. But you're going to call him to you, reward him with a treat, praise, affection, whatever. Bring him in the house, hang out a little bit. Let a little bit of time go by. Ideally, a minute or two would be nice to go by before he goes in the crate because now that's no longer associated with the coming when called. Okay? The, so let's take it. So there we go. So now we flipped it. Now coming when called was rewarding and going in the crate is a separate situation. Okay? Or the jumping up. Best thing to do with the jumping up, first of all, make sure it's not being rewarded so you could just ignore it, theoretically. But... A lot of times it's just really impossible to ignore some of these dogs, uh, especially big dogs. So if the rewarding's not enough, you might have to push the dog off of you or nudge the dog a little bit. So you're not, you're not punishing the dog harshly. All you're doing is protecting your own personal space and kind of 
nonchalantly pushing the dog off. But what's important, if I have to go like that with my hand, or even, or if I have to use my, my leg a little like that, what's important is that I'm not severely punishing the dog, but most important is that, I, right, so I'm not striking fear into the dog, I'm just setting a boundary for myself. And, but what's most important is that you're not giving the dog attention. So if my arm goes like that, not from your face, don't give your face. So don't talk to the dog, don't look at the dog, but you can physically just nudge like that. So you're kind of just giving them a brush off. Might be a nudge, or if their foot's there, you could just kind of swipe their foot off, or you could just block with your leg. So it's very gentle. So, um, I mean, unless you're on the extreme side of positive reinforcement training, you shouldn't have anything to feel uh, bad about. You're just, and you're not doing, you shouldn't have any negative side effects from it. You're just giving a little brush off. That would be the best thing to do, okay? But the main, so it's a mild punishment or a negative uh, of some sort, right? It's at least not rewarding the dog and the dog learns to figure it out. Then when you do want to pay attention to the dog, you say, come here, buddy. Now we're back to the coming when called thing again. You say, come here, even if it's just from a few feet away. Come here. And he comes over and then you pet him. Now every time you do that, you're rewarding the dog for coming when called. And he's getting the attention that, that he wants. You're getting the affection with the dog that you want. Everybody's happy, but our consequences are being lined up. Okay? So that's really, I mean, the nutshell version of the most basic thing with whatever behavior you're talking about. Make sure you're looking at it from both perspectives. From your perspective, what do you want? From, but also from the dog's perspective as far as how are those consequences actually lining up? Am I accidentally rewarding the wrong behavior? Am I accidentally punishing the wrong behavior? Right? So make the, the good behavior should lead to good consequences. The bad behavior leads to bad consequences. Or at least just don't mix them up. Okay? So there you go. Really basic tip. Uh, if you guys like this kind of information, uh, depending on where I wind up posting this, you can comment, you can like it, you can share it. Uh, you could subscribe if you're on YouTube and what have you. Okay, so thank you very much, guys. I hope that was helpful. See you later.